Welcome everyone, my name is Steve Weber. Today we are going to be discussing Central Firewall Reporting Advanced, which is now available for the MSP Flex program. Central Firewall Reporting Advanced is going to give you the ability to have reporting for up to 365 days. This is going to be depending on the number of blocks assigned to the XG firewall and the amount of data that is being generated by that particular firewall. This will also give the ability for saved reporting templates inside of the customer central admin dashboard, as well as the ability to schedule reports to be sent via email or simply to be generated and have that done via HTML, CSV file, or PDF. As you can see here with the term side of the house, Central Firewall Reporting Advance is available in 100 gig blocks per XG firewall at an annual cost. With MSP Flex, the XG Firewall Reporting Advance will be available at 25 gig blocks per XG firewall. This will be done with a monthly cost, giving you the flexibility to increase or decrease the number of storage blocks per XG firewall as needed. Key to note here, you cannot mix monthly and termed customers inside of the same central admin dashboard. It is also key to note on there that central firewall reporting is only available for XG version 18 and above. So let's go ahead and jump into the Sophos Central Partner Dashboard and take a look at how we activate the licensing for central firewall reporting, and then go into a couple of examples of what you can pull from the central firewall reporting. Okay, so at my Sophos Central Partner Dashboard, you'll need to go in and actually change the licensing for a particular monthly customer. To do that, we're gonna to go to Manage Customer Usage, we are going to select the customer account that we want to change, and we're going to hit change licenses. Deselect all of the products that you do not want to change. If you leave those selected and you make a change to those particular licenses, it will make that change for those immediately. Since we only want to affect central firewall reporting, select that only and select next. Ensure that central firewall reporting advanced is now selected for this customer. If you have a customer that is wanting to turn off central firewall reporting, you would do that in this exact same section here. If we unselect central firewall reporting advanced, you will see that there is now a warning indicating that removing the advanced license will set these devices back to the free tier, removing the license and deleting any stored logs and reports for this account. There is going to be no recovery for this. If you select this for a particular customer, it will delete all of the logs and reporting for that particular customer. So use this with caution. So we're going to leave that checked. We're going to go ahead and hit next. And at this point, it's going to let us know that we are going to be enabling the central firewall reporting. We are making no other changes and we're going to hit save. At the bottom right hand side, we can see that that update was successful. We can now launch into that particular customer. Now that we are in that customer's Sofa Central admin dashboard at the top right hand side, you're going to click your name at the top, select licensing, and you will now notice that Central Firewall Reporting Advanced is available and you have this link to manage. So this is going to be a two step process. You first have to go into the Sofa Central Partner Dashboard and enable Central Firewall Reporting Advanced for that particular customer account. When you create a brand new customer, you will also be given that same option. You then have to go into the particular customer's Central Admin account and into the Manage field for the Central Firewall Reporting. Once we get into the Firewall Reporting, we can see that we have all of our firewalls now available. Inside here, we can actually select one of our firewalls and increment the license count for that particular device. You'll notice here that it went from zero to 25 gigs for this particular device. These other ones are still going to remain at the free tier. The free tier is a rolling seven days of reporting inside of Sophos Central. You can also see here that this particular customer already has a device that is set up for Central Firewall Advanced. You can see that here over by the Advanced tier. The free tier will simply have nothing available. When it is listed for Advanced, you will see Advanced on there. 
if we go ahead and select save for that particular customer, that will now activate the advanced license for that particular firewall. Now, for this firewall, you'll notice that I do not have the ability to remove that license. I cannot simply come through and remove the allocation for that particular license. To do that, I have to go ahead and go over to these three little dots, and you're gonna see the option to convert to free. Essentially, if we want to pull the licensing, the advanced licensing off of this particular firewall, we need to convert it back to the free tier. We'll go ahead and select that. Again, it is gonna prompt us with that same warning, letting us know that removing the advanced license will convert us back to the free tier. This will also remove any logs or reports that are over that seven day rolling window. Go ahead and confirm this that device is now back to a free tier. We can see here at this bottom firewall, this one has one license currently allocated. So we have one 25 gig block currently account allocated to this firewall. If this customer was in need of an additional block of storage, let's say we were getting close to that 25 gigs, you can see here we have the actual usage with the current storage limit. We were getting close to that 25 gigs. We can go ahead and increment that allocated license. You can now see I have 50 gigs available for this particular firewall. It is each individual firewall that is gonna have the particular licensing counts. It is not shared across all of the XG firewalls. You will also have an estimated storage. Now I would recommend that after a few days of running the firewall advanced, you come back into the dashboard, take a look at where your current usage is at, probably about 15 days in, and then I would say probably at about 25 days in. Take a look at where your current storage is at. Is the 25 gigs giving you the storage needed, the amount of days required? If you're requiring 30 days and that 25 gig block is only giving you 15 based on the amount of data being generated by the XG firewall, you may need an additional block with that. Now we do have a sizing calculator on the Sophos.com website. You can absolutely go over there, put in the amount of data for your firewall. You can put in the size of your firewall and it'll give you the best guess calculation. That will be based on the 100 gig. So you can just divide that by four. Okay, now that we know how to assign the licenses to the actual XG firewalls, Let's go ahead and take a look at a few of the reporting options that we have with the Central Firewall Reporting Advanced. To do that, we're gonna go back to the overview. We're gonna to go to Firewall Management and select Report Generator. Okay, once we're at Report Generator, first thing we want to do is select the particular firewall that we want to take action on. Now, if you have firewalls set up into a group, in this case, my lab group with my main office and branch office, I can report on both of those firewalls in that group at the same time. If they are ungrouped, it will be reporting just on an individual firewall, which is what we are gonna be looking at here. The ability to go in, take a look at this particular device. Now, the very first report you will get is the bandwidth usage. Now, it is key to remember that these are simply reporting templates. These are not gonna be absolutely everything that you need, which is why we're gonna go through a quick example on how to drill down and build a report that you need inside of the environment. This bandwidth usage report has quite a bit of data on it. It is designed to show you the amount of bandwidth, where everything is going inside your network, who is utilizing that particular traffic. And we're gonna focus on this report here just for a moment, and then we're gonna actually modify this report to meet our needs. So if I wanted to go in and add a few additional data fields to this, right now we can see I've got secure socket layer, uh, AMI games, OpenVPN, YouTube streaming. I can see the risk, the category, the amount of traffic and the hits for each one of those websites over the last 24 hours. Maybe I need to have a little bit more information. I don't need to know just the application or the category, but I wanna know where is this coming from on my network? What you can do is you can actually hit this little drop down over to the right hand side, and this is gonna present you with a column selector. This will be different for every report 
template, we'll actually go through a couple of these in the examples. For this example, I want to also add in my user and my source IP address. For all those users that I have defined, I want to make sure their name shows up on that report. And I also want to make sure I have the source IP address for this particular report as well. Go ahead and hit apply. And what that's going to do is it's going to take a few moments to update that report with that additional information. As we can see here, it's added in that additional information. And on this reporting, it's broken that out by source IP and the user on there as well. You can see I've got this open VPN on 7.72. I also have a user that was now added to that 7.72 machine uh, running that AMI game. So this allows you to take a more detailed approach and leave a more detailed action on those particular devices in this environment. We can see where all of our traffic is going. So we can see the, the top hits. Each one of these categories can be filtered. Right now you can see that that is filtered by bytes, showing you the largest bytes at the top. If you want to change that by hit count, you can absolutely click on that particular column and it will now resort that data by hit count. It will start by least to greatest. You can then hit that again and it'll bring it from greatest to least for that particular report. These do take a moment to actually uh, set up in the environment, but if we want to take a look at this, I want to take a look at my hit count here, and now we're gonna get into where we want to take a look at maybe a little bit more of a risk inside of my environment. I can see what's going on. I can see the traffic going on inside of the environment. I can see the number of hits per particular application category, as well as the risk. Those risks in there, I really don't care about the low risk things happening inside of the environment. So what we can do is actually start to customize this report. And you can do that simply by go ahead and selecting that one under risk. That is gonna go ahead and place that into the query. Now, we could have also come in here and typed in risk. That would have given us the option for risk, which you can see here, it's still in yellow. You have the option drop down where it has equals. We can have that as not equals, greater than, uh, greater than or equal to. You can also then add your own number in here if I wanted that, you know, number four for risk category. Now, what I wanna do in this particular case here because I wanna get rid of the green is I'm simply gonna, again, click on that to pre-populate that into the query. And then I'm gonna select that equals and mark that as not equal. Now, what that's gonna do is it's gonna allow me to focus that report a little bit more just on the traffic that might have a higher risk. I don't wanna know about things that are normal and good inside of the environment. DNS requests, those are not things that uh, concern me at all in this particular environment or this particular use case. So now we've removed everything that is ranked as a level one risk inside of the XG firewall. Anything that is two or above, we have inside of this report. And we can now come in and see you know, Google websites, Skype, Teams, anything else going on inside of this particular environment. So that's how we can go through and quickly and easily take action as to what's going on, how to customize those reports. And we can continue to drill down inside of this. Again, if I didn't want to know about general internet, I could select that. Or if I only want to know about streaming media on this particular environment. Again, anything that's a higher risk uh, that is streaming media, again, generate that report. It'll now go ahead and build it based on those two query conditions. So this allows you to get very flexible as to what you're presenting and what you're going to build. Once you have the report set the way you want it, maybe this is going to be a higher risk streaming media report. You can now with Central File Reporting come in and hit save template, give that template a name. You could also go ahead and schedule the export reporting on there as well. So we can call this streaming high risk. Let's say streaming high risk. From here, we can also go ahead and schedule the reports to be created on any set frequency. This is going to allow us to create them in Sophos Central as either a PDF, CSV, or HTML. You can have that done daily, weekly, or monthly. You can set the day that that's gonna happen on. Uh, the time frame that you're going to get on there as well, if you want the last 24 hours, the last seven days, last 30 days. It'll also give you the ability to send an email 
link or an attachment uh, to that particular user on uh, this account as well. So it allows you to get very flexible as to what you're gonna be doing inside of the environment. If I go ahead and select send an email link, uh, I'm gonna export this to another Sophos admin. I can select any other admin inside of both the Sophos Central partner dashboard as well as the Sophos Central admin dashboard to have that report sent to. The user does have to have the ability to log on to Sophos Central, so they will need at least read access to get into uh, Sophos Central, especially if you're gonna be providing them with a link. Okay, so let's jump back and take a look at a few different report options here. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're actually gonna pivot on this particular report. I'm not gonna change my report template, but I wanna get a little bit of a different amount of information on here, different type of info. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a couple of additional fields on there. I'm gonna add my destination country, my destination IP address on there, and we're gonna go ahead and hit apply. Now all that is gonna do is, as well as the risk categories on there, it's gonna also give me the destination country as well as the destination IP address. I'm gonna go ahead, remove streaming media, and then regenerate this report. Now, while the report is generating, at the top here, you're gonna see that the graph doesn't exactly give me a lot of good details. So what we're going to do is we're actually gonna change how this graph looks to make this to show us a report of destinations that are high risk, applications that are reaching out to destinations outside of the US. And you'll see here in a second of how we're going to do that. So first, I'm gonna go ahead and change this to a bar chart. Once we have this set up as a bar chart, I'm gonna go ahead and hit at the top right here, you'll see a little wrench and screwdriver. We're gonna go ahead and select that. And you'll notice that I have bytes and application. What we're gonna to wanna to do is I wanna change that application to destination country. Again, I wanna report that shows me the destination countries, where is that data going to? Now, as you can see here and the report that I mentioned, we wanna see everything that's going outside of the US. So again, the first thing I need to do is I need to build a query around that. So I'm gonna come here under United States, select that. Again, over in my query, I don't want information that has to do with the United States. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the little equal sign and I'm gonna say not equal. So this is risk not equal to one, destination not equal to United States and I'm going to generate that report. Again, this will take a few minutes to build that additional query into the report. And you can now see that I have a breakdown here at the top of where all my traffic is going to. So removing the US out of there, which is the majority of my particular traffic, I can now go in and see, all right, this is, you know, I've got a, quite a bit of traffic going to Ireland, Netherlands, UK, Japan, France. You can see the breakdown of the particular traffic for this particular XG firewall. And right now, this is anything that is uh, above risk one. So what if I wanted to, I didn't care about risk two inside of the environment. I wanna add a few more changes to this. Let's go ahead and change this current option here for risk to be greater than, and we're gonna change this from a one to a two, and again, generate that report. So we're gonna remove everything that is a one or two from the report and only see the high risk items inside of there. Now, taking a quick look at this particular report, I can see there's other items that I may not wanna report on. I don't see those as particularly risky behavior. I can see Microsoft Teams, I can see Skype. Those are products that I use for business. So I have a couple different options. I can see that there's a category for conferencing so I could select that category and add in conferencing. If I only want to pull out those particular applications and I didn't want to pull out everything that has to do with that particular conferencing category, I can come in here and select Teams, I can select Skype, and again, mark those from equals to not equal in the environment. And again, all I'm doing at this point is continuing to drill down on the data to build a report that has the actual data that I need inside of my environment. I wanna see what connectivity we have 
outside of uh, the US that is going to these particular locations, what is that traffic? Now, again on here, I can see I've got Facebook, I've got this QQ website. So I've been able to take quite a bit of data. You can see I've got a lot less countries on here as well, Ireland, Japan, uh, and China. Now again here, Facebook may not be something that I'm worried about, but depending on what your policies are as a company, uh, you may or may not want this particular information. Windows updates, probably also something that I can remove from there. This QQ website, maybe this is something I want to go and investigate further. I want to know, you know, what is communicating? What is this particular uh, application or website uh, that someone's going to inside of my environment? I can see the source. I can see the destination IP address, the user, and the destination country of where those are going to. So again, Central Firewall Reporting allows you to go in and customize all of these reports to make sure you can get to the data quickly and easily. Now, as we save those reports, those saved reports will show up inside of the list. You'll see anything that is default from Sophos will have the Sophos logo on there. You can see I already have a saved report with risky destinations outside of the US. I also have another report in here that I built for unproductive users, and this is gonna be based off of the web usage report. Taking the same concept in play here, we're gonna go into the productive, unproductive users, and you'll see that that query is gonna be for category, uh, anything that's not equal to acceptable, anything that's not equal to games or advertisements. And I can now get a very clean, neat report showing me the traffic, the unproductive traffic inside of my environment. Again, from here at this point, if this is a report that I needed to get sent out, I can simply select schedule, I can now choose to keep this as an existing template or save it as a new template, pick the name for that, and I can go in and select my scheduling options. Okay, hopefully you found this information useful. Hopefully you'll be able to utilize the Central Firewall Reporting Advanced for MSP Flex. If you have any questions, please reach out to your local MSP team and we'll see you on the next video.